Right about now, if not for the coronavirus, the Summer Olympics would be starting. You ever watch the opening ceremony? And the pomp and the circumstance, the songs and the verve and the dance, the torch lighting, the parade of the participants. And they walk out onto the world stage in unison, each country unanimously uniformed, carefully costumed to characterize their heritage. And then, near the end of this exhibition of traditions, comes the United States of America. And it looks like a mix of every other country. You see red, white, and blue, but you see a lot of other colors too. You see the smiles, you see the strength that comes when diversity is merged with purpose. Melted by the moxie to turn metal into metals and grits into gold. United by the will to come home as champions. But it was postponed until next year. And I wonder, will we even still have Team USA by then? I wonder, is America even possible? This idea of a melting pot with 330 million ingredients, the delicacy of such a delicacy, will we savor it or spit it out? Slogans painted on courts and roads want to know. The fire is inquiring as it drips from awnings of unrest. In the shards of shattered windows, our reflections beg the question, will the American experiment excel or explode? Will the most prosperous and free country in the history of the world cannibalize itself? I don't know. But what if we re-envisioned patriotism into not believing our country is perfect, but believing it's worthwhile to make our country better? What if we didn't think of it as pledging allegiance to a flag but is pledging allegiance to the fabric that we're all made of. Liberty, equality, and justice are in our constitution, not because we're American, but because we're human. It's why these truths are self-evident. It's why the yearning to be part of something greater than ourselves is so prevalent. This law that's written on all of our hearts is so much more important than any law that could be written in a Capitol building. If we were willing to live by the tenets of respect and love and grace, we wouldn't need to separate ourselves by income or gender or race. If our conscience were collective, our government wouldn't need to be. And what that means to me is power to the people. We are powerful people. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we need to be co-workers with God. Even if you don't believe in God, we still need to be co-workers in good. We need to see the good in each other. We need to see the good in our country. Yes, learn about slavery, the Confederation, and Jim Crow. But also learn about Garrison, Gettysburg, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Learn about lynchings and plantations and segregation. But also learn about emancipation, the Cold War, and the greatest generation. Learn about our most egregious breaches of freedom. Learn them so well that we'll never feel the need to repeat them. Learn about the courage and the passion that we unleashed to defeat them. Learn about the failures and successes of America. Learn how they've both been twisted. Learn about what the rest of the world would look like today if America never existed. Learn and let us be free to discern and seek. And by any means necessary, let us be free to speak. Let us be immersed in serving. Let us reason our way to our convictions and not be convicted by coercion. You can't create a utopia with imperfect people, but you can create a place where people are free to be imperfect. Can we at least agree that such a place would be worth it? Whatever your intentions, Whatever tactics you're employing, just ask the question, am I building or am I destroying? Ask not what your government can do, but what you can do. Stop looking at everything through glasses that are tinted red or blue. And to the mainstream media, stop tinting everything that the masses are looking at. We can write a much better narrative. Look, 
I don't know if America is possible. It's never been done before. But I know the only way to find out is to want it and to work for it. To operate from a position of hope and not hate. To thirst, not for blood, but for brotherhood. We have to give what it takes. We're gonna have to summon some of that golden medal and moxie and grit and God and good and find the will to make our way. And when the Olympic flame makes its way to the next opening ceremony, the eyes of the world will be watching to see what countries take the stage. I don't wanna root for West America or East America or Coastal America or Middle America or Black America or White America. I just wanna root for America. <laughs>